the Andover Community Center. Welcome as the high school boys hockey regular season comes to an end. And whenever these teams match up and on the schedule, when it comes out, you mark down the matchups between the Crimson and the Huskies, a rematch from that 2022 state championship game that went double overtime. It was one nothing Andover earlier this year. Should be another good one here to wrap up the regular season as both teams ramp up for the playoffs and both teams could end up at the XL Energy Center in a few weeks. Along with Joe Ruland, I'm Jim Erickson. Maple Grove 18-6-0 and over 16-7-1. Low scoring game when they played earlier, Joe. Probably will be that again here tonight. Yeah, it was a battle of the goalies and uh, it was a chance that late in that first period for uh, Gore who came up with the long go. Caleb Gore won 16:47 of that first period. He scored the lone goal. That was the game winner. But we are uh, going to get ready here for the this drop of the puck. It's coming up next. Andover and Maple Grove. Stay tuned on QCTV Sports. Hi there. I'm Cameron Kaitonen, City of Andover Natural Resources Technician. I'm here to talk about the Nature Preserve Commission, formerly known as the Open Space Advisory Commission which is an advisory board to the city council. This group is primarily tasked with management and maintenance decisions of the four nature preserves in the city of Andover. This group was originally formed in 2006 to help decide what properties to purchase after the approved $2 million bond referendum that same year. After that referendum went through, the group helped to decide on four preserves that were purchased. The group is also tasked with looking at potential funding options for potentially buying new land in the city. The group generally meets quarterly on the second Wednesday of the month at around 6 p.m. So in beginning in November, December, we will be looking for uh, new members to the group. There will be information in the no November, December edition of the city newsletter, which will outline the application uh, process uh, and instructions for if you are interested in applying. So if you are interested in the outdoors, interested in being a part of the community and being uh, working as, along with the city of Andover, and also would like to meet new people, this might be a great opportunity for you. Back at the Andover Community Center, the Huskies and the Crimson, along with Joe Rulin, I'm Jim Erickson. The Northwest Suburban Conference Championship already decided. Maple Grove has won their uh, third title in the last four years. They uh, shared with Rogers two years ago, won it outright in 2021. They are going to be maybe the number one seed in their section. Centennial in that section. You also have Rogers, a win tonight by Maple Grove. They shore up the number one seed in their section. Meanwhile, we all know about Andover, the Huskies. They lost last week to Grand Rapids. That cost them the number one seed in 7AA. They did, and uh, they came back, picked up a nice 3-1 to one win, nonetheless, versus Centennial uh, last Saturday. And tonight, Maple Grove has gone to try to avenge an ugly loss on Wednesday, 8-1 to one to Hill Murray. And I think there's nothing more than they love. They just get the ice going yeah. and hit the ice and, and get that uh, game behind them. Crimson head coach Todd Berglund said anything that could go wrong did go wrong and then 8-1 loss to Hill Murray. Meanwhile, Husky head coach Mark Manny says he loves wrapping up the season against Centennial and Maple Grove will really get them ready for section playoffs. And over in the white uniforms and uh, the Crimson Red, it's uh, Maple Grove Crimson. These teams in the last three seasons, their last six meetings, exactly even at 3-3-0. and And over left to right here in the first period, Huskies will push it out to center. Ben Dahl. Dahl comes in, shot blocker, save, and a juicy rebound up the left wing, and Cogswell just zipped by him as a Crimson push it back out to center. Dahl had the game-winning goal versus Centennial in that second period. Dahl comes in to the game with the 15 goals, leading the team. Cogswell has 14, Perry has 13. Here for the Huskies, have some trouble back behind their net. Chase Nadu played some forward and center here this season, tried to clear it out. It's held in by the Crimson. Their top line of Bush, Carcos, and Giuliani, very good. Can't hold the zone. Owen Smith will set it up and dump it back in. 
Cash Cruitt starting tonight here for Andover. Cal Conway will be their starter in the playoffs. But to Cash Cruitt has proven that he can play that position here for the Huskies. Puck is in his zone. Right wing shot. It bodies out in front of Cruitt. And he's able to find it and cover it. And then some extracurriculars, as you might expect. This is a heated rivalry between these two teams, Joe. Yeah, it amazes me. It always, always competitive. But you have two coaches that really come from similar backgrounds, and they're very close off the ice as well, along with uh, Mark Manny and Todd Berglund. Berglund, 180 career wins, and Manny, 255 career wins. Manny in his 15th season, and Berglund in his ninth season as head coach of Maple Grove. Perry comes in here, centering pass out in front, and getting in the way of that is Zach Price, who's been their number one all season long. Now Babineau brings it in, wings it around, far side, race for the puck. Belisle trying to get there. He runs face first into Joey Leafblad, who had a goal recently against Lakeville South, a good win for the Crimson. And then they'll sweep it in deep to the far side. It's the Jackson, Kuznick, Preston, Moses, and Joey Leafblad line out there for Maple Grove, and then they throw it right back into the Husky zone. Huskies a little thin defensively tonight, Jim, as uh, Landon Stringfellow, Brody Manelli, they're both out. Yeah. And uh, of Those course. Those are top four defensemen. They are. And we'll see how long Keaton Coe goes. He was questionable coming in two tonight. But he is on the ice. Yeah, Keaton Coe battling an injury game time decision. Here's the KJ Sauer line centering Caden Martin and Gavin Sullivan. Caden Martin, one of four Andover players in the lineup tonight. As Sauer just planted one of the Maple Grove Crimson here along the near side, Lane Glendy. But uh, Caden Martin, one of the four Andover Huskies in the lineup tonight that played in that state championship game against Maple Grove two years ago. Crimson have a couple of players. Lucas uh, Bush and Connor Stelgis were in that game as well. Tell you a lot of experience. And uh, th this year, Maple Grove brings it again. It seems like each year they come back and they look better than the previous season. Joey Imgrun brings it into the zone. He had the lone goal in that 8-1 loss to Hill Murray. Caden Martin brings it across. That line still out there. Got across the line, stolen away. Andrew Carco centering that top line. He's forced out of the play by Cogswell. And then the Huskies clear it all the way down. No icing on that. Zach Price, 933 save percentage. 1.75 goals against despite giving up eight the other night. Cogswell had it, lost it. Crimson back the other way. Opening three and a half minutes here in the first period. Each team with one shot on goal. Huskies bring it back with Cole. There's Keaton Cole testing that injury. Puck almost bounded out in front. Cogswell tried to get to it. Dahl keeps it in. They sweep it to the far corner. Cogswell had a, a headlock on one of the Maple Grove uh, defensemen, Gavin Anderson. I thought maybe he was going to take him into the turnbuckle. It looked like it. A bulldog move. And instead, the Crimson come back right to left. Luke Giuliani. Brother had a hat trick in that uh, championship game yes. two years ago. Magic double header, 6 5, or double overtime, 6 5, Husky win. Of course. Ray Vink with the game winner. Also with Finn Brick, or on Green Brink, also on that squad. He's at Wisconsin now, but. Uh, Icing hey, here on Andover. There's a need to know by Joe early here in the first period, but it has to do with this rivalry. In fact, the last 10 years, this tonight is the 23rd meeting between these two teams. Who do you think has the lead on the series? I think it's pretty even. 12-10 yeah. for Maple Grove. I know it was pretty even going into last season. Here's a quick shot for the point. That hit a skate out in front. Grabbed by the Huskies, cleared by Babineau. It's going to be icing again here. Luckily here in high school, you can change. Will the Huskies change? Looks like they won't. They had just changed before the previous faceoff. So no need to change here. The Perry, Gorowski, and Babino line will stay out there. 61 to 55. Maple Grove leads and goals scored over the last 10 years. I mentioned this the 23rd meeting in the last 10 years. And we mentioned the last three years, it's dead even. Three wins <laughs> apiece in the last six. Maple Grove did sweep the season series last year, four to one, three to two. This is uh, technically a non-conference game. The earlier game was the conference game. And Maple Grove has wrapped up the conference championship with Andover finishing in second. Centennial also tied for second. Out in front is shot in the goal. 
Joey Leafblad from behind the Andover net, and it's Maple Grove who gets on the board first here at the 4:32 mark in the hockey game. Well, he set up in the high slot with that one knee and the one timer to get some force, and buries it for his fifth goal of the season. Wow, he got some leverage, got some torque with that knee down. He was not going to miss that one timer opportunity. Yeah, he beat the goaltender Cruitt stick blocker side. Just inside the pipe. In fact, off the inside of the pipe and in. Fifth goal of the season for Maple Grove's Leaf Bladders. Another one that banks in. And Cash Pruitt. 7 2 0 on the season. 1.87 goals against. 917 save percentage, as you see there. He's been a very good backup to Cal Conway here this season. A very solid, very reliable. Get a look also. Hey, in goal, Zach Price. We'll get you his numbers. That's a line goal. That's a line goal. Kuznick and Moses assisting Leafblad as Maple Grove buzzing right now. 1 0 lead on the five minute mark of the first period. Mard with a nice check. He knocked uh, Lutner down. And it goes back here to the Crimson. They'll reset here in their own zone. Gavin Anderson. Breakout pass, Glendy. Glendy's a sophomore. Not a lot of size at 5'7", but gritty. Back to the center circle, backhanded in by the Huskies, Gavin Sullivan. That uh, sour Martin Sullivan line. We'll see how deep the teams go if they go four lines throughout the game. Dahl picks up the loose puck. He tries the center. Cogswell going to the net. Crimson defend that. Back up to the far point. Pardo has it here in the near side. Anthony Pardo, one of those players that played in that state championship game. And he gets it in on uh, Zach Price, the junior goaltender, six foot 160. He was the losing goaltender. Made 26 saves, but fell to Andover earlier this season, one to nothing. Yeah, the 1.75 goals against very impressive. 17 and 6 overall. Dahl against Sar uh, Karkos here. Karkos with a couple of hat tricks this season for the Crimson against St. Thomas Academy and against Blaine. Huskies setting it up to the near side point. Pardo back in low. Keaton Coe. Still just the team captain's going to be on him. Back up and around. Nadu jumps into the play to the far corner. Towards the slot. Intercepted Maple Grove. Bush the other way. Just committed to UMass Lowell with the within the last few days. He has it poked away. Huskies long pass ahead. Cogswell to Dahl. Off of his stick and in deep. He goes after it. Along with the defenseman Stelgis. And the Crimson will push it back up. Babino comes up. Finishes his... Uh, his check, and then they wanted to find up to Gorowski, intercepted. Crimson come back in on the right wing. The defenseman, Lutner, centering pass off a leg. Babineau took that one, and he's feeling that one. Crimson hold it in. All the way to the near side point. Anderson mishandled it, comes out of the zone, backhands it back in. Wow, you're going to see they can't afford to get much thinner on that defensive side thus far, even though Babineau on the forward, but they've been shifting around some of those lines for tonight's game. Law for Perry, then banked off the wall. Retreating is Lutner, a sophomore defenseman for Maple Grove. Crimson a year ago, 23 wins. They've gone to state four years in a row. A total of six appearances going back to 2012. The 2012 game was the section championship where they beat Blaine 12 to 1 at the Coliseum of the state fairgrounds. There's a five minute major on Blaine. And Gosh, you want to say Maple Grove scored four or five goals on that major, and the game was pretty much over. Huskies out of their zone, up to the blue line. Law, poke check to the puck, and numbers the other way. Three on O for the Crimson out in front. Backhand, they score. Tommy Piccinato, the defenseman, finds himself leading the rush, and it's a three on O, and it's 2 nothing Maple Grove. Beautiful goal. He showed that forehand and... Brought the goalie over, and he just swept it, tucked it nicely behind him in the sock drawer. Third the goal, the third goal of the season for Piccinato, sophomore. Not a whole lot you can do in your goaltender, and you're facing a three on zero. They don't even do three on zeros in practice. <laughs> good so mitts, uh, good it was mitts. a bad change by Andover, but also just a bad luck on the bounce that uh, bounced back towards him. Andover's going up the ice. 
And Maple Grove, they were the ones actually kind of uh, scuffling back deep, and they were going to be behind the play. Andover's going to have numbers the other way, and instead it turned out to be a 3 on 0. And the Crimson score with Piccinati at 7.37 of the first. And now the Huskies here at home ice. They're in a bit of a hole. Sour a shot at the goaltender high, and the rebound Cogswell goes high and wide. Uh, some great hands, great mitts by Piccinato on that move. Clean pass and buried it. Leafblad got the assist, so a two point period for Leafblad for Maple Grove. Eight and a half left in the first midway mark. Huskies, Owen Lutgen. Like I mentioned, uh, Landon Stringfellow and Brody Munley out. Two guys that would be in the top four defensive pairings, so a guy like Owen uh, Lutgen, just a sophomore. Has to come up and fill in. Centering pass from the near side wing. That zips through. Huskies push it out. Sowers got a chance to track it down. Here he comes on the near wing. He goes to the backhand. Rebound left side. Saved by Price. And off of that rebound, outstanding chance for Perry. Perry still after it. Gorowski keeps it in. It's below the goal line. And the Crimson find it there. Gavin Anderson trying to clear. And instead, the Huskies pinch. Keep it alive. Gorowski walking in on the left side. Babineau backhand. Saved by Price. And the net gets knocked loose. All kinds of activity. Gorowski ends up into the net, into Price. A whistle and a stoppage with 7.45 remaining in the first. Wow, and you can see this move and how everything got going. But the Huskies push sour. A good, strong move cut through the blue. Put the shot on. I thought Perry was going to find a home for that puck in the back of the net, but a nice save made by Price. Perry taking the draw, and the net knocked loose again. Lots of activity. Huskies try to get bodies and pucks of the net here when you're down 2 nothing. Shots on goal are 6-4 Andover at this point. Andover again. Hey, tough loss up in Grand Rapids. With that loss, lost that uh, one seed. It'll be playing that first section game. Yep, they'll play on Tuesday. They'll play either Duluth Marshall or Northern Edge. Puck from behind the net all the way up the slot. Kept in Nadu, but it's off the glass and out of play. Yeah, the seven double-A pairings came out. Grand Rapids, the one seed, and over two East and Rockridge round out the top four. Forest Lake, Denfeld, Marshall, Anoka, Cambridge, Isani, and Northern Edge, which is uh, St. Francis and North Branch. And those games actually begin tomorrow. The play-in games are tomorrow at the high seeds. Here the Crimson through neutral. Brady Abbott, fourth line center, and he gets it over to the left side. Shot, Kale Braid, save made by Cruitt. Rebound still remains here in the Husky zone on the near side as we approach seven minutes left in the first. Huskies uh, able to squeak it down the ice. It sneaks its way into the Maple Grove zone. They get started. It's Lutner cross ice to Braid. He'll chip it in. Line change, Maple Grove. You can see that lack of uh, defenseman experience for Andover tonight. A lot of odd man rushes early here from Maple Grove. Fourth line out there for the Huskies now. Austin Westman centering Caleb Gore and Jordan Giacomni. Caleb Gore, the only goal versus Maple Grove. He's a fourth liner, and he had the game-winning goal against the Crimson in that earlier meeting <laughs> at Maple Grove. Two on two at the line. Crimson right on the attack again, and a shot hit on the right side. David Kukinen. Familiar name and the save by Cruitt. Kukadin with a quick backhand flip that time. Big fella, 6'3, 215. Five goals, 17 assists on the season. Westman's line stays out there with Gia Camini and Caleb Gore. Puck is tied up at that far circle. Westman ends up with it, backhands it up to the line, held in. Quick shot there. Charlie Steenerson is their extra defenseman. He's 6'4", 180. He's just a sophomore. That's the kind of frame that they like to build a defensive body oh, on. Yes. And uh, Steenerson certainly has that frame. Another whistle and a faceoff far wing draw. This time, uh, wait, oh, and a score right off of the draw. Kukinen, a clean faceoff win. And then Kukinen, a quick blast. And that snuck underneath Cruitt. And now it's 3 nothing. A snipe near the dot of the face-off circle. And that was tucked nicely under the crossbar. Not sure if he saw if uh, Cash had a chance to see that puck or not. We'll get a look. 
actually top of the face-off circle. Hardly moved. I don't think there was any way that Cruitt saw that. There were a lot of bodies. The bodies were right. all kind of tangled up and tied up in that circle off the draw, and Kukinen just decided to let it fly. That's his sixth of the season. And the Crimson with a strong 3-0 start here in the first period. Always an interesting series. You'd think the home ice team would have the benefit, but Huskies won the first one. Last couple of years, Maple Grove has come here and picked up the win. Crimson right back on the attack. Boy, they're dancing into the zone. They get it in low on the right wing. No shot on that that time. Rebound Cogswell. Cogswell sails in, shot deflected off the glass, bounces back behind the net. K.J. Sauer throwing his body around. Crimson grab the puck and come back the other way. Andrew Karkos, their uh, assistant captain, senior, centers that top line. Karkos second on the team with 16 goals. Bush leads the team with 20. Those haven't been the guys that have scored here tonight. Leaf Vlad, Piccinati, and Kukinen, the goal scorers here tonight. Now fourth liner Abed has it, shoots it wide. Well, that's Back a again. testament to the depth of this Maple Grove squad. Yeah, Leaf Vlad with that big goal to start at this at uh, 434. And now it's 3 0 all of a sudden. Huskies for checking, Babineau trying to create something here with under five minutes left to go first period. Shot for the point near side, looking that one knocked down, block picked up Crimson, and they bring it back the other way. Lutner, drop pass, shot just wide. Belial there right in front of Cash Cruitt, able to find a piece of it. Ludner again, he's off on the line change for Maple Grove, 420 left. Boy, a goal here for Andover, but they just turned it over onto the pad of Leaf Flatty. Shot scored, rebound, Kuznick. And it's all of a sudden four to nothing. Boy, left that was all a, alone. a sloppy pass out of the zone, the breakout for the Huskies. They gave it right onto the stick of Leaf Flad, who got the shot, and then the rebound to Kuznick. Off of the pad, and it's 4 0. Yeah, he was left all alone, had all day to settle that puck. And again, went top shelf. And what well, appears tonight, Maple Grove doing a nice job of avenging that 8 1 loss to Hill Murray yeah. on Wednesday. Yeah, they're fired up. Coach Todd Berglund said one thing you got to learn as a, you know, in any sport, any level, you got to turn the page after you have a bad one. You got one of those throwaway games. and. It looks like they have taken that 8 1 loss to Hill Murray. They've thrown away. It's already been taken to the landfill up at Elk River. <laughs> and uh, they've been able to move on. A 4 0 lead, exactly four minutes left. Lee Flad is a third liner. Piccinato is a third set of defensemen. Kukinen is second line winger. And uh, the last goal, Kuznick, is a third liner. So not their usual guys, their go-to guys offensively. Four different goal scorers here for Maple Grove. Under four minutes left first period, 4-0. Bouncing puck. Left side shot, save, trying to get the assists. Bobbitt got an assist, scrambling puck out in front. Price was down on the ice. Maple Grove ends up with a puck below the goal line. And it's pushed back up ahead here by the Crimson. Lendy had it, lost it. Boy, if Andover could get at least one here in the final 320, that would uh, help their spirits going into the first intermission. One thing is for sure, they can't give up another one. As Maple Grove comes in, nice little drop pass by Bush. And a penalty coming back to the way. It's going to be on Maple Grove. Cogswell coming across. Delayed penalty. Goalie out of the net and the centering pass. Touched here by the Crimson. And our first power play of the night will go to the Andover Huskies. A tripping call going against Owen Smith, the defenseman here for Maple Grove. The JV game earlier here won by Maple Grove by the score that we have right now. Four to nothing. And over on the power play of the season, 25%, 19 for 74. And their top uh, power play getter so far has been uh, Perry Crosby with four goals. Ben Dahl, I think, has got four, four as well. well. I think they're right. tied. You are correct. Under three minutes left to go first period. Power play here, Maple Grove's penalty kill, 88.6%. So they have been very good 
on the penalty kill. Their power play hasn't been what it did usually is, 13.8%. Here comes Pardo across the line, a shot that sails high over the head of Price. Rebound held in momentarily, and the Crimson will heave it down, bouncing puck to the left of Pruitt. We'll see if they can get some pressure in the power play unit going. Minute 20 left in the power play. Across the line, Nadu to the line, and Nadu back across. Left side shot goes just wide by Pardo, and the rebound picked up by the Crimson. Skating through neutral, Giuliani all by his lonesome low angle shot, stick save Pruitt. Same, Giuliani has Pardo. the same skating style as his brother. Does, yeah. They just have pure smoke on those skates. Pardo up ahead, Perry. Perry finds Dahl, cross sides, Babino shot, pad save, rebound, another save. Perry was down the left wing, the rebound came right to him. And Zach Price. Save left and then save right. He used both pads on that one. Yeah, great, great balance coming from one side of the crease to the other. He's been impressive thus far. Minute 30 left in the period, 30 seconds left in the power play. And the Huskies will have to retreat. Defenseman Lutkin, his cross ice pass, intercepted Bush, had it momentarily. Now it's controlled again. Babino has it down the left wing. Sullivan going to the net. Ends up below the goal line along the end wall. Sauer has his big body there, grabs it at the far half wall. Final eight seconds of the power play. Up high Belial to Sauer. Left dot shot off the glass. Lipkin waiting for it at the point. Pass Sullivan. Near side. Maple Grove back at full strength. Penalty has expired. Maple Grove penalty kill. Nearly 90%, as we mentioned, coming in. They do the job. Sauer tries to center. Trying to get it to Babineau and a sneaky pass. Maple Grove defends, but held into the zone. Mason Sanders swings it around. Final 35 seconds of the period. Babineau back behind the net, corner to corner to the far side. And Maple Grove, now they do just poke it out. Sauer comes up. He gets planted from behind. Caleb Gore and a solid check. Comes back here near side wall. 15 seconds left in the period. Austin Westman trying to keep it alive. Gorowski ends up having it with a shot wide off the end wall. Rebound off the end wall. Played back up and out by Maple Grove. Cleared all the way down. And it will be an icing here on the Crimson. Just four seconds left to go in the period. And the faceoff in the Maple Grove zone. If you would have told me at the end of the first period going into this game that it would be 4 0 Maple Grove, I would say you're crazy. But uh, that's what we have right now. And the. Huskies are going to have to regroup during the first intermission. You can see a good crowd here tonight, Silla. As uh, they expected, a good competitive matchup thus far. It's been all Maple Grove. All Maple Grove. Dahl in the corner off of the draw. We get the horn, and that is it. Shots on goal, even at 10 apiece, but certainly not even on the scoreboard. Leafblad with the first goal of the game at 434. And then following that, you had uh, Piccinato, you had Kukkonen, and you had Kuznick. 4 nothing Maple Grove as we go to the intermission here on QCTV Sports. I enjoy having a tough schedule throughout the year. I don't, I mean, yeah, easy games are fun when you get 12 goals in a game, but... I think it like it helps build a team and it helps build chemistry early in the year. I don't know, it helps us work hard and it helps us just like get disciplined before the end of the year, which it actually like when games start to count. You kind of mentally get prepared for like the tough like battles you're gonna have and you're not like destroying teams all the time and you have to fight through adversity that you're not always going to be handed everything. Yeah, I agree. I think it definitely tests kind of your commitment and how you have to dig deep. We emphasize working our hardest here, and that kind of shows those third periods where it's both games. You kind of have to just dig deep and keep going. So I think the tougher schedules definitely help us come closer together as a team and overcome some bigger battles sooner than later. Yes, I would definitely say it was a hockey town. Maybe not so much uh, when I was younger, but uh, we built a really good culture here, and you see lots of kids out at the games, and they wanna they wanna be just like the older guys, like I did when I was that age. We have uh, 
Minnetonka ended our season last year, and uh, we got them next week, which is a big game. You know, that's one that we circled. You know, they ended our season. We got to give it, give it back to them, and then it's always uh, Maple Grove in the conference. Always have two, sometimes three, good games with them a year. You know, we saw them at State two years ago, and it's been. I think that's definitely been our rivalry for the last four or five years. I would say, well, definitely Minnetonka, and then I'm, I'm really looking forward to playing Hillmarker this year. I think yeah. that'll be a fun one. I'm personally excited to play Edina. Um, I think it's always a grind against them, and they're always, they always get a little, like, scrappy, and, like, they always have, like, a different play than Tonka and Hill and all the other teams, so it's just, like, a fun environment to play around, and they have a big student section and everything, too, so... It's a fun environment. I'm excited to play Orno and Holy Family. We haven't played mm. those single A teams yet, at yeah. least when I've been here. So both really good single A teams had some success last year. So that should be fun, I yeah. think. So we have a few rituals. Uh, one thing we've always done is we have a husky in the middle of our locker room, big husky head, and we make sure nobody steps on that or you got to kiss it. And uh, we do the same warm-ups. We take a lap out around the ring, go play some sewer ball, same warm-up every game. Like, we play this game called four versus D. Every game day, <laughs> it gets so, so competitive. Try to play Stewie um, sometimes, yeah. but we're not too good at soccer, so it's kind of yeah. more of a kick the ball around. <laughs> Personally, me and Kaylin, um, we have a Krabby Patty before each game, just like the little like candy gummy burgers before each like period and everything. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just like a ritual since I became a freshman and she was a sophomore, and she just kind of brought me in. What we like strive to like be looked at is just like disciplined and like hard workers. Like that's what like our team like is built on is just like completely like hard work and discipline and just like being classy and just being a good role model to the little kids too. Yeah, I was just gonna say too, like not only there's hard working on the ice, but it's also the type of person you are off the ice that we wanna be known for here. I feel like Andover hockey, we've always done it the right way, you know, we're respectful, you know, we appreciate everybody we're playing against and the referees. And I feel like we just we have a big motto here is like everything what you do affects everybody in the high school and it's not just one person, it's the whole team, you know, when something goes wrong. So we like to keep it professional and respectful. The Andover's Fun Fest beer tent or the typical pancake breakfast. Well, the Andover Lions have something new this winter season. Whether you call it cornhole or bags, the Andover Lions invite you to their first annual Lions Bags fundraiser. Yeah, Lions Club is known for doing kind of a lot of the same fundraisers. One of the big ones people have probably heard of is the pancake breakfast. and. Recently we just had our Christmas party and the governor of the Lions, he actually said, you know, think outside the box and, and do things that you enjoy. And that's actually how this was definitely, this idea was born because it's something I have no problem spending my time creating and volunteering because it's, it's actually something that I really enjoy and think is fun. And I'm hoping that um, the community will think so too. I know I've played the last or couple years, we've been involved in the Cornell Tournament at FunFest, and that's always been a really popular um, event. So I'm hoping that a lot of those same teams will come in and play and support this one. With food and beverages available for purchase and fun with friends, you'll stay warm in the courtyards of Andover Banquet Room while giving back to the community through the Andover Lions. We are doing a Saturday, January 20th, here at the Courtyards of Andover. We, start, we want to start playing right at noon, so please come register at 11 a.m. 11 to noon, come register your team. And yeah, we'll have everything set up so we can start throwing bags right away at noon. To register your team or for more information, email Kathy. You can also look on their Facebook page or email andovermnlions at outlook.com.
So I definitely want to encourage people in the community to come, whether you are on a team or not, just because it can be very entertaining to just even come watch the other team. Don't miss out on a chance to have fun and make a positive impact at the same time. Here at Ramsey since 2018, um, so we're just over five years old. Total square footage is just 56,000 square feet. Uh, our middle area where our bathroom's and office eats up about 3,000 square feet, so our actual usable space is about 52 to 53,000 square feet that we are actually in use of. The facility was definitely built to maximize the usable space because um, we got to give every square inch to those uh, people that are coming in to use it. In, in general, the idea of the facility is to accommodate youth activities. That's what the, the building was built for, is to provide, especially during the winter time, the space needed for basketball, soccer, lacrosse, basically any type of, of sports training. Adrenaline Sports Center in Ramsey features three 70 by 170 new turf fields as well as three 50 by 75 sports courts, big enough to welcome all sports. Uh, and then events. The event side of our business has definitely taken off now where we are filling up a pretty good chunk of May through October with events. We do everything from smaller craft shows, uh, we host the Ramsey Business Expo. All those are, you know, four or five hundred people with like 50 to 60 vendors. We'll probably do more than 20 total events here in 2023. Field and court availability varies throughout the year and rentals for more than two hours are welcome as long as they fit into the schedule. Pricing depends on the day, time, and spaces needed. A lot of our big users, our association users, are multi-year con contracts. So they're in here using the same field space, the same court space for multiple years. Um, and then everything else is just kind of done season by, by season. So uh, we just added a, a volleyball group last year. A lot of our groups like that do rent the same time, the same dates uh, throughout the entire winter. And then we kind of put a contract together to that. But we also just do regular hourly rentals. We have a lot of groups that just come in, you know, rent court space by the hour or, or field space by the hour just when they need it. Everything's pretty much done through me. We have, actually have two websites. We have our AdrenalineSC.com uh, website, which is for the facility in general. And then we actually have a specific events website, which is AdrenalineSCEvents.com. Uh, the event website basically lists all the events that are currently scheduled to take place. It's easy to find out how to get things done because you just contact me and I'm happy to work things out. Some trivia for you. What started in 1958? Oh, I'm sure you've heard of it. Any guesses? Answer, the Anoka County Library System. The Anoka County Library System has been around for quite a while, 65 years. Whether you have used their wonderful services to help you study, read, learn, or play, they are still here for you and will continue to serve the community. So join the Anoka County Library in celebrating their 65th anniversary, happening on Saturday, November 18th at Northtown Library from 10 to 1230. The Sapphire Jubilee will have library trivia, prizes, music, family story time, a scavenger hunt, fun activity stations, a special guest speaker, and of course, no celebration is complete without cake. So mark your calendar for the 65th anniversary of the Anoka County Library on Saturday, November 18th at Northtown Library from 10 to 1230. See you there. Hi there, I'm Cameron Kaitonen, City of Andover Natural Resources Technician. I'm here to talk about the Nature Preserve Commission, formerly known as the Open Space Advisory Commission, which is an advisory board to the City Council. This group is primarily tasked with management and maintenance decisions of the four nature preserves in the City of Andover. This group was originally formed in 2006 to help decide what properties to purchase after the approved $2 million bond referendum that same year. After that 
referendum went through, the group helped to decide on four preserves that were purchased. The group is also tasked with looking at potential funding options for potentially buying new land in the city. The group generally meets quarterly on the second Wednesday of the month at around 6 p.m. So in beginning in November, December, we will be looking for uh, new members to the group. There will be information in the no November, December edition of the city newsletter, which will outline the application uh, process uh, and instructions for if you are interested in applying. So if you are interested in the outdoors, interested in being a part of the community and being uh, working as, along with the city of Andover, and also would like to meet new people, this might be a great opportunity for you. Heading down West River Road in Champlain, you may notice some construction happening at the Chandler Park site. Hey, that construction is an effort to provide additional parking and will make a significant improvement to the Mississippi Crossings development area. The Mississippi Crossings proved to be a fun, exciting, and beautiful addition to the community in 2023. The construction at Chandler Park will provide more parking opportunities going into 2024. To stay up to date, be sure to follow QCTV as well as the City of Champlain for all updates related to construction in your community. Hi, this is Cole with Anoka County SHIP and I have a question for you. When was the last time you moved from your seat? Movement makes all the difference in living the healthiest life you can, especially if you're working from home or the office where you're probably sitting down all day. So whether it's getting up for a cup of coffee or walking over to check out the window, a little bit of movement can make a lot of difference for your health. So get up and get moving with Anoka County SHIP every day at GoAnokaCounty.org. Thanks. Club started two years ago and was basically inspired by my own children to have a club at the school that I knew that they would definitely like as they're not that into sports and things of that nature. So I wanted to create something that I know my family would like. The games that we provide are not like the ones that they'll necessarily find at home. Uh, we don't do and we're back at the Endover Community Center. It's the first intermission getting set for period two. And that first period shows we look back all Maple Grove shots on goal ended up being even 10 10. But uh, Crimson got some golden opportunities. They got shots on net grade eight chances and uh, took advantage for a 4 nothing lead. Yeah, they not only got the numbers in terms of the goals, they had the numbers on their rushes on ice, and I'll tell you, Cash Crude was kind of left out there yep. alone on an island on a couple of occasions, especially this last goal you'll see here. No one around to clean it up or pick up a defender or a winger, and they buried it, and I'm, I'm impressed that it was just 10 goals, shots on goal, that, considering it was 4 nothing. Yeah. Well, okay. that's four out of ten. That's a 40% shot percentage. That last goal by Kuznick, and then they had the other one, the Picanato goal. Those two are ones that they'd really like to have back because Picanato ended up being a three on O. That was kind of a funny bounce off a of skate. Ended up in a three on O, three on O on the on the goaltender. And then Kuznick's goal also was just the Huskies failed to get the puck out of the zone. It was a turnover in their defensive zone. Ended up basically a two on O on the goaltender and Kuznick easy off the rebound on a shot by Lee Flat, I think it was, and uh, Kuznick scored to make it a 4-0 uh, uh, lead here as we go to the first intermission. Teams had just the one power play, one penalty in that first period. Andover had the only power play chance, the only penalty called against Maple Grove, and Andover 0 for 1. We mentioned the shots 10-10 as both teams back out on the ice. And uh, getting prepared here for the second period. It'll be interesting to see what Andover does here, what kind of fire they come out with. Uh, Maple Grove certainly came out with fire. Certainly they put that 8-1 loss to uh, Hill Murray behind them. You know, the Huskies uh, see what kind of pride they show here in their home ice, try and come back in this game for well, nothing. And of course, uh, Maple Grove is not about to stack a couple of losses. In fact, the only time they've done this this whole year was their first two games of mm -hmm. the year, and they started the season 0-2, but throughout the remainder of the season, 
Hey, they rebounded well after a loss. And they picked up the win and got things going. You're seeing that here tonight. Yeah, and those two uh, games that Maple Grove played early in the year, that was Edine and Wyzetta. So uh, not like they were playing Sisters of the Poor <laughs> or anything to uh, start on Friday, November 24th and 25th in the old turkey trot. So it's the Huskies home white uniforms down 4 nothing. They're starting the Ben Dahl line, and they do win the draw and dump it in as we're underway in the second period. Crimson trying to break it out off the glass, bouncing back to Nadu, and then he'll send it right back deep in the Crimson zone. Again, the Crimson still playing to shore up the number one seed in their Section 5 AA tournament. Andover knows they're number two, so not a whole lot on the line here for Andover tonight other than just a warm-up for sectional play beginning next week. And a try to get healthier. There's a bouncing puck off a leg, and it's in on the goaltender, Cash Cruitt. He'll cover it up 33 seconds in the second period. Yeah, if you can find a game or, boy, get a player off five, six days, that's golden here before the season starts. And I know uh, Coach Mark Manny always, always a competitive individual. Well, heck, he's got over 200, what, 255 wins. It's tough to have them sit some of the players, but you got to get them right for their section play run. Preston Moses wins the draw, shot from straight away, ends up being deflected. Owen Smith back to the near point, another shot there wide. This Smith still just pairings, a good defensive pairing here for Maple Grove. Gorowski brings it through center down the near wing side. He is taken out. Mentioned Connor Stelgis, and they're going to get him for a penalty. Let's see, it was along the near side wall. From here it looked like a good uh, check, but apparently the puck had left the vicinity and they're going to uh, get him. Connor Stelges to the box for interference. So he finished the check, but then the puck kept going, but then he kept his body on the attacker for an Andover, and that's a textbook, you'll see it right here. There's the puck, slides into the corner, and then he takes him down, and that was tight. That one could go either way. But Andover is going to get a break in a power play. Andover with uh, 15 power, excuse me, 19 power play goals on the season. 0 for 1 here tonight against this Maple Grove penalty kill that's pushing 90% on the season. Pardo in on the right side. Here's Perry's shot off the end wall glass. Picked up Crimson the other way. Two on two. Out to center is Leaf Blad. Gives it up left side. Shot by Imgren. Ends up off the glass and back out to neutral, and the Crimson will retreat to their zone. Even on that penalty kill tonight, they seem like they have that extra style up and get up and go. Back behind the net, starting it up is Chase Nadu, the sophomore. Right to left, Cogswell gains the zone, comes in with a shot right into the body of Zach Price. 21 decisions here. He's been their number one man, their backup goalie. Henry Freeze is a broken hip. He uh, won all three games that he played in. He is out for the rest of the season as the faceoff will be to the left-hand side of Zach Price. Minute 23 left in the power play. Pulled back by the Crimson, rung around. And that's going to find its way all the way down the length of the ice. Nadu back to get it. Huskies will set up from behind their net. Anthony Pardo. Pardo is going to play baseball at Illinois State. Pardo starts it up, stick to stick, Nadu through center, gains the zone, shot deflected out of play. 59 seconds left in the Andover power play. You never want to say it's a must convert situation. We're still early in the uh, game, just two minutes into the second period here, Joe, but down 4 nothing, it's almost a must convert situation for the home team. They have to, for even their mindset to kind of get themselves into this game. And as you mentioned uh, in the first period, Dahl and Perry both with four power play goals on the season. Babineau crashing into the end wall and look out ducking out of the way is the Andover <laughs> bench as that one goes out of play as the Crimson try to clear the draw will remain in the Crimson defensive zone. Here you get a look here to the corner and quickly trying to send it off the board and then beyond the blue line but it never touched the board. That's Gavin Anderson who sent that puck going head hunting into the Husky bench Huskies get the draw. 40 seconds left in the power play. Get up along the end wall. Sauer there just a little too late. Could get there in time. And the Crimson cleared all the way down past Belial. And Crude will stop it behind the net. His Third. pass to Caden Belial. It is just 30 seconds left on the man advantage. And the Huskies challenge 
to come out of their own end clean. Oh, and Litgood, sophomore again being called upon. His pass for Belial out of his reach. And the Huskies passing has been a little bit off, and then Cruitt having trouble at the side of his cage, stick handling, and another Husky just went down. There's another penalty coming up on Maple Grove. Ten seconds left in the initial penalty. They'll come the other way. Five seconds left. Extra attacker here, delayed penalty, and now it will be touched by Maple Grove. It is going to be a slash called here against Maple Grove. Might be leaf flat right here. We'll see it. Yep, yeah, right there. Slash, and then he went down. Could have been a trip as well. So a Joey Leafblad, who has one of the four goals, and we'll have just a very short five on three, Joe, for three seconds. It is, but uh, again, they can get the numbers going. And as you mentioned, Jim, that passing just off a bit tonight. They can't seem to get that cadence down thus far. Perry pulls it back. Nadu sets up right side. Pardo a shot gloved by Price, and he'll hold on. Meanwhile, the other penalty has expired. Minute 55 left in the penalty on Leafblad. So from one power play to another here for the Huskies. This will be their third. They're 0 for 2. See if they can win this draw first. Yes. Dahl pulls it back. And it's Nadu. Back to Dahl. Up to Pardo. Dahl. Outer half of the far circle. Pardo. Nadu. Working around on the perimeter here are the Huskies looking for some way to get it backside, maybe get that box for Maple Grove to move. Here's a shot by Nadu all the way through. That one saucered in, saved by the goaltender Price. Back up to Pardo. Nadu again, wrist one, this one gets blocked. Getting the way of that was Stelgis, who spent the two minutes in the box, and now the Crimson clear it down. Minute 15 left in the man advantage. On the penalty kill, they are not allowed, the Crimson for the Huskies to even breathe. Stelgis on the four check, keeps the puck in, skating with a Giuliani, and he'll come back out to neutral and then thrown back in by the Crimson. And over trying to get a little mojo shot in the arm. They've had some chances. Back-to-back -back power play opportunities here and 50 seconds left on this one. Perry walks down the near side, lost the handle though, Crimson back. They've only given up nine power play goals. Here this season. I didn't check the stats to see how many shorthanded goals they got. As a left wing shot down low, Giuliani. I want to say they they probably, they're four. probably close to, yeah, I was going to say they probably are close to having as many shorthanded goals as they have given up power play goals. 28 seconds left in the end over power play. And just a good textbook penalty kill here for Maple Grove. Certainly, certainly well done. And I'll tell you, they have been spot on hitting their stride. Lutkin in on the near side, back behind the net, puts on the brakes. Lost the puck below the goal line, and it's shoveled out of the zone. Lutner for Maple Grove. Five seconds left, and Belial will have to go back behind his net. That'll do it for the power play here for Andover. Huskies will be the number two seed in 7AA behind Grand Rapids as this one's cleared down. Icing here on the Huskies as Maple Grove has come back to full strength. Exactly five minutes into the second period, still 4 nothing. Maple Grove. Well, it's starting to feel outside like winter, finally. I wasn't ready for spring to end, uh -huh. but that means state high school weather, and maybe we can escape with less snow this year. Jim, you'll be in the booth at 45, making the calls for uh, boys and girls. Looking forward to that. Your and last course, season with Lou Nanny. Yes. Tenth and final working with Lou. He announced that a uh, whole oh, month, month and a half ago or so. So this would be his last state tournament worked, of course, 60 years. He hasn't worked 60 tournaments, but he's done it. It's been 60 years since he started. He had to take a few off, and he was still playing <laughs> for the North Stars. They could make every year work as they crimson to the blue line. Both of these teams, they've got a chance to be back there again, as they have been the last several years. And over trying to clear. Babino finds a loose puck. Headman to Gorowski out of his reach. Check that, that was Gore. Then it's back here to Nadu in his own zone. He tried to clear again a pass. I got knocked down by the Crimson. Kuznick, they set up, come back on side. Kuznick lost it, shoots it, and it's off a of defenseman, Nadu, and then in on Cruet, who covers it up with 11-11 left second period. Kukano just waiting for that rebound or waiting for something to leak through those pads as he was in the blue waiting for that opportunity. He was securing it, nice job. By Pruitt. Both of these head coaches, Mark Manny and Todd Berglund, come from the northeast quadrant of the state. 
Of course, uh, Mark Manny, Moorhead native, former Spud, and Todd Berglund from Thief River Falls, a prowler. In <laughs> fact, he added a former prowler and former St. Cloud State Husky defenseman, Brendan Bushy, to his staff here this year. Shot from the left point, shot by Cruitt, or the save by Cruitt on the shot by Owen Smith, who is a guy who captains and quarterbacks at power play and penalty kill and he knows how to get pucks to the net and he does it right there and crew it able to corral it in i'll tell you that is a gift in fact you saw it last year with the huskies on that oh, redirected off the pipe shot from the point here on the left side ends up to maple grove back below the goal line setting up again this is the fourth line kale braid to the left side and his shot off the glass wide held in at the point by steenerson Sophomore, he had a brother Ben, who's going to be going to the University of Vermont. He's going to be a catabout as Andover whistled down icing here. 10-24 left second. Shots are 14-13, still close in favor of Maple Grove, but it is not close on the big board, 4-0. It is not. In fact, I was just looking at the power plays for Andover last season, and they alone had one guy in Cooper Conway with 19 power play goals alone. It was a team last year that put up 167 goals. Yeah. Almost down two goals per game. Huskies just don't have that high flying offensive, high powered, high octane offense that they've had the last few years. They have graduated so many scorers and so much skill. As they do get ahead to Sullivan, they push it in. They're on sides. Shot by Westman. Saved by Price. Huskies have not challenged. They do have 14 shots on goal, but they have not challenged Price until now. Scrambling out in front of Price here in the near wing as they collapse down that line of Perry, Babineau, and Gorowski. And Price holds on, but the numbers, uh, Joe, last year the Huskies averaged 5.4 goals per game scored. This year they're 3.67. That's almost down two goals a game. Yeah, and to mention the 19 power plays for uh, Cooper Conway. Also, you'd mentioned about the someone being kind of that maestro on that power play, and certainly Casey was that last year for the Huskies with 19 assists, 19 power play assists. Belisle gets a shot from the near point. That's off a boot to the side of the net. Huskies really collapsing down on the Maple Grove net. That came off the mooring or something, or they whistle it down. I think the referee just lost sight of the puck and will whistle it down, get another face off in the Maple Grove zone. You can see the Huskies being a little more desperate here. They're going hard to the net, trying to get something past Price here. Price made some diamond saves, moving from one side of the crease to the other and turned away on a quick rebound coming in for the Huskies in that first period. But uh, another face off win by, Cos uh, by Perry, Crosby Perry. They pulled it back to Belisle. Shot then from the right wing, saved by Price, and the rebound is cleared down by Maple Grove. Should be another icing here on the Crimson, and it is. Huskies trying to dial it up and put a formula together for their first goal. You get a look there at Cash Cruitt. He's uh, had that tough first period, and I think uh, Manny probably had a, a discussion with them, Mark yeah. Manny, about uh, tightening it up around a D. Cal Conway is the backup tonight for Cash Cruitt. Right off of the draw, saved by Price. Rebound, Crimson. Pulling it out of the zone, up ahead, sent down. Connor Stelgis going to play for the uh, Bruins in the North American Hockey League after the season is done. Crimson working out in front, high puck, cooking and centering out, cooking and back after the rebound, tried to center up the slot. That's off a leg, back out to Smith. Smith to Stelgis, dances down the left wing, the defenseman and on the backhand. Circles in the corner. Hands it off again to Kukkonen. Kukkonen is 6-3, big winger, power winger. Up left side, Stelgis, big blast. Cruitt looking for the puck. It hit traffic out in front of him. Still not yet out. Cogswell took a big windmill whack at it. Now will be tapped out of the zone. Maple Grove will reset. Boy, they are buzzing. Back in. in across the line, Imgrun, right side shot, blocked by Cogswell. He blocked Kukkonen's shot, and just out of the reach of a winger on the left side. Husky push it back. That's going to be offside. They'll have to touch up here. Delayed offside with 8.15 left, passing the midway mark of the game. Same score as we had at the end of the first period. No scoring here in the second, 4 nothing. Yeah, I think Glenn had that good look coming on the backdoor side, but defensively, the Huskies tied him up. 
Crimson back in their own zone. Maple Grove taps it up. Nadu picks it off. For Gorowski, a little out of his reach. Cole has it. Near shot, takes it from the near wing. Through a screen, pad save made by Price. Long feed, Crimson. No icing, they waved it off. Nadu from the corner over to Pardo. Here comes that Maple Grove forecheck. We haven't mentioned their forecheck much tonight, but it has been very effective. It has been fierce as Andover clears. It has. I was also watching Leafblad on that last uh, shift, and boy, he had some impressive checks. Lutner, the defenseman, takes it in. Centering pass for Moses off his stick. Pick back up Kuznick. He'll fire one from way out. And the save by Cash Cruitt. Mentioned Cash Cruitt, the backup this season. Coach Manny says Cal Conway will be their man in the postseason beginning next week in 7AA, but he wanted to give Cash Cruitt an opportunity to play in a high leverage, high pace type game against a rival just in case something happens to Cal Conway in the playoffs. And no better team than playing against this Crimson squad. Yeah, they'll get pucks to the net. You'll see a lot of rubber for this Maple Grove team. Both of these squads have been to the state tournament four years in a row. As Maple Grove backdoor feed just out of the reach of uh, Giuliani. Nice play there going down the slot. Couldn't get his stick on it. Carcos has it back. A couple of hat tricks here this season. In fact, he scored all three goals in a 3 0 win over St. Thomas Academy recently. Perry off of his body. Gives it up to Westman, back to Perry, then Westman throws it back in. Under seven left in the second period. Now, Maple Grove came in. You know, they weren't scoring a whole lot of goals either coming in over four, which is quite a bit, but low for them over the past years. They've been known more as a lockdown defensive team this year. So you fall behind four nothing against them. It's going to be tough to come back. Because of their decor. Well, of course Sullivan. you got the goalie with Zach Price. Well that too your last line of defense. With six and a half left second period. Maple Grove grabs the puck. Carcos center on that top line. Cross ice pass Bush. Bush drop pass back here to Carcos with a shot saved by Cruitt. Nifty zone entry and a drop pass there. Good smart play. Those guys have played together a lot. Bush and Carcos. Bush had a four goal game against Holy Family earlier this year. Putting up some big numbers. Huskies have Mason Sanders. Defenseman brings it in, backhands it, brings it around at her six left in the second period. Crimson long bank pass. That's going to be in on Cruitt, and he'll play it safe. Sanders was kind of on a mission defensively. He was looking for that puck, but then he did not get it, and he lined up a pretty healthy check in the corner against one of the Crimson players. Sanders getting some time with uh, the injuries and getting uh, the defensive core rested before postseason begins. Yeah, Landon Stringfellow. He also played against the Crimson in the state championship game two years ago. Stringfellow, Pardo, Dahl, and Cogswell were all on that team. What a magical night that was. Mentioned my other play by play and color commentator yes. partner Lou Nanny. He says that's the second best championship game he's ever seen. And he's done, you know, 50 whatever tournaments overall. The only one that he uh, said was better was in 69. Well, I'm not so sure that the Crimson felt that was a magical night as I no, was down in the them. press conference room and it was pretty emotional as the year before that they lost in overtime to Eden Prairie. But uh, I mean, both teams played so well and at such a high level, so entertaining. Disappointing somebody had to lose, and there you get Mark Manny. Quick shot there. Yep, Coach Manny in his 15th season. Huskies out to neutral, right back to their line, knocked down and controlled the other way. As that slides in, and as the goaltender Zach Price has been doing all night long, he has been cool, calm, and collected. As he'll stop that one for a faceoff here in the Husky zone. I remember a hey, Finn Brick last year. Brink had a heck of a year. 36 goals, 38 assists. And then, of course, maybe, Jim, you'll get a chance to see Gavin Thorson at St. Cloud State next season on your call. It's a possibility. They're always having a good season in juniors. Puck tied up right along the end wall here in the Maple Grove end. Brady Abbott in that fourth line comes down to help out. And the Crimson flip it up out to center a little bit too far. 
And the Huskies play it back out to neutral. Pushed ahead, then right back in. We're seeing the fourth lines for both teams get a lot of time here in this game with four and a half left of the second period. From his own end is Abbott. Then it's Lutner up to the Husky line. Abbott again tried to backhand it. Cole pushes it the other way. Giacomini had to go off of his stick. It'll be the Crimson from behind their zone. Sophomore defenseman Lutner. Lutner finds Abbott. Abbott 6'5", junior center on that fourth line. Gorowski ends up with a puck. Drop pass to Sauer. Sauer to the slot with a shot. Hit bodies, never made it in. Then off the goaltender. It bounces to the near wing. And the Grimson able to push it out. Kuznick to the blue line and in. 350 left second period. Nadu Gorowski. Nice move at his line. And he just got slashed from behind. Stick out of his hands. Delayed penalty. And then Cruick. <laughs> He was trying to get to the bench, and of course, long change here in the second period. He ran to his own guy with Pardo. Yes. And uh, then Maple Grove touches the puck. We'll get another power play here for, uh, you can't say Andover hasn't had chances. Their fourth power play of the game. Absolutely. As you can see, if, whoops, absorbs a check with his teammate at the blue line. Hey, I keep thinking about uh, that uh, state championship year for the Huskies and that end in the Maple Grove matchup. Another great uh, thing about that matchup. It really represented the strength of the Northwest Suburban Conference. Mm -hmm. Yes, it did. Perry in the far side corner. Another penalty on Lee Flat. Second time he's been called. Got called for the slash. Good job by uh, Crosby Perry dropping his stick. Get that slash. You sell it just a little bit. Cleared down by the Crimson. Pruitt will stop it. Andover's got to find a way to generate some offense here on this power play. Yeah, they've been able to stop Maple Grove from adding to their lead, but they need to score. Perry down the near wing with Dahl going in with him. Dahl meets it back behind the Maple Grove net. If you're going to get a by price, you're going to have to have some serious tape to tape puck movement or get some traffic in front of him. Crimson ring it around. Pardo waits for it, stops it in front of the Andover bench. In pass Dahl. Perry behind the net. He eludes one check. Then he gets bumped along the wall by Anderson. Not out. Held in Huskies. Minute left in the power play. Nadu shot. Pat save. Rebound. Score. Coxwell. Coxwell came in on the right wing. A wide open net. And there's the one for Andover. They break through and it's four to one. Ring the bell. 15th goal of the season for Coxwell. What a beautiful shot. And Pritch pitch it perfect right here. Look at the shot down low. Gets the big boot as NATO took that initial shot, got that kick and pad save, as you would say, Jim. A, a juicy pad, rebound, and cutting in good hands, Cogswell. Yeah, smart play by Nadu. He's shooting that with a purpose. Get it on net. Maybe you'll sneak it past the goaltender. If not, there's a good chance he's going to kick it up on an uncovered wing defensively on the backside. And that's exactly what happened when you're five on four. You can't cover everybody. And now the Huskies just whistle down. It'll be a penalty on Andover. It's going to be a roughing call on Sauer on a hit right at the line. It was for the sophomore, 6'3", 175. So he had a tough outing up at Grand Rapids. Pardo gets the assist, Nato the other assist. You just see right there, Sauer so strong, so big. And yeah, they got him for the rough. So this will be the first power play chance for Maple Grove tonight. Their power play pretty solid. Actually what I should say is it's 13.8. Their penalty kill is the best part of their special teams but they just haven't scored many on the power play. They've had 58 power play chances as compared to 74 for Andover coming in. Andover's penalty kill 75% last year was 82%. But uh, here Andover finds a seam, clear it all the way down. Three of the four penalty killers. Get some fresh skates out there. Crimson's Lucas Bush brings it across. Wearing the C. He and Connor still just two of the captains. And again, the Huskies doing a nice job clearing it all the way down. Yeah, not letting them set up anything right now. And the Huskies first to the puck and clearing. 
Huskies have given up 14 power play goals coming in. Dipsy do is Bush right along the line. Good job, Huskies right at the blue line, preventing Andover's zone entry. And again, they flip it all the way down. Minute left to go in the penalty. Sauer sitting in the box. Here's Stelgis. Long rink wide. Karkos tips it in deep. Belial gets to it first. Swings it around, waiting for it. Kukin it. This is a must kill here for Andover. They've got the momentum after scoring the goal to make it four to one with now a minute left to go. And here they clear it all the way down. Excellent job by Law. One minute left. Look up. Four rows up. That came up quickly into the crowd and some gasps. Looks like everybody is okay. And then they'll throw the puck back out on the ice. They didn't, <laughs> they didn't sneak it into their purse. No, they didn't. But that's loyalty, right? Yeah. It's not like in baseball where they throw it back just After for the other home reason. Run. Yeah. <laughs> the visiting team home run. <laughs> Once had a friend who caught the home run of Cal Ripken Jr., Hall Get of out. Famer, and he threw it back no. at, at the Metrodome. <laughs> I go, what are you doing, guy? 25 seconds remaining here in the power play for Maple Grove. They jump across the line. Giuliani lost it back out to neutral. Restarting is Lutner, and here comes a break for Dahl. Dahl shot, save by Price. Oh, those kind of breaks have been happening for Maple Grove all game long, especially in the first period. Finally, the Huskies get a break, but they can't cash in. You see it right here. Dahl was trying to settle that puck and get it in the right spot. Tried to go five hole, but Price closed the door in those paths to prevent a shorty. With Cogswell trailing, and Price able to control the rebound. And with that situation, because Cogswell's right there, was critical. Five seconds left, power play, 23 seconds left, second period. Maple Grove player went down. Abbott got up looking for a whistle, didn't get it. Cleared and icing on Andover as they come back to full strength with 16 seconds left to go in the second period, 4 1. Little wrestling after that play as Pardo trying to get by and Kuznick as well. For Maple Grove, Kuznick, a couple of big players. Kuznick 6'2 and Bardo about 6'3. Moses against Sauer here on the draw. Pulled to the half wall. Maple Grove wins it. Flipped wide of the net. Anderson, 10 seconds left in the period. Westman down that far side wall, too far for Sauer. Sauer goes into the four check on Lutner. There's the horn, and that's all for the second period. Joe, your quick analysis of the second period. Here. Huskies uh, picked up a little bit of momentum here with a power, with a, a good look on that power play goal, and uh, see if that brings some life. It sure initiated a good shorty attempt there for the Huskies to cut that lead to 4-2, but I think they're happy with the 4-1 and bring it heavy in the third period. Well, they keep it within reach. The power play goal at 14-24, the period Cogswell from Nadu and Pardo. Made it four to one. Big crowd here at the Andover Community Center. And that's our score as we go to the second intermission and get ready for the third. Maple Grove four, Andover one here on QC TV Sports. Yes, I would definitely say it was a hockey town. Maybe not so much uh, when I was younger, but uh, we built a really good culture here. and. We see lots of kids out at the games, and they want to—they want to be just like the older guys, like I did when I was that age. We have uh, Minnetonka ended our season last year, and uh, we got them next week, which is a big game. You know, that's one that we circled. You know, they ended our season. We got to give it, give it back to them, and then it's always uh, Maple Grove in the conference. Always have two, sometimes three, good games with them a year. You know, we saw them at state three years ago, and. It's been, I think that's definitely been our rivalry for the last four or five years. Find the identity of the team, and, and, and along those lines, a big part of that is having players accept a role. Um, and no, not everybody can be uh, you know, the, on the top power play unit. Not everybody is going to be on the ice in overtime, uh, but everybody's got a role to play. And if we're all supportive of each other, we'll succeed as a group. So uh, putting the... Uh, the needs of the group ahead of the individual desire is a big part of it. And it's the quicker you can get that done, uh, the, the be better chance you have to grow as a unit. So um, sometimes it works out and, and sometimes it doesn't that well, and that's part of it. But a big part of the job as a coach is to get everybody to pull in the same direction. So we have a few rituals. Uh, one thing we 
always done is we have a husky in the middle of our locker room, big husky head, and we make sure nobody steps on that or you gotta kiss it. And uh, we do the same warm ups, we take a lap out around the ring, go play some sewer ball, same warm up every game. We always play a scoring game, we call it in practice, and just try and beat each other out, you know, it's, that's, that's kind of how we get better out here, is just competing with each other. I think there's some teams that are, are, are uh, rivals every year, and, and he mentioned Minnetonka, and I think some would say uh, Duluth East and Grand Rapids, uh, for a different reason. They're the teams we always have to get through to get to the state tournament. Uh, Minnetonka is a big rivalry because they're going to be ranked number one to start the year uh, this year. They won it last year. But right here in uh, in the Northwest Suburban and in the Anoka Hennepin School District, we're big rivals with uh, all four schools, Anoka, Blaine, Coon Rapids, and Champlin. So we look forward to playing those guys. It's always a, a spirited battle, and, and at the end of it, we can shake hands and, uh, and you know, know we're all part of the same great school system and, uh, and wait for the next battle. I feel like Andover Hockey, we've always done it the right way, you know, we're respectful, you know, we appreciate everybody we're playing against and the referees, and I feel like we just, we have a big motto here is like everything, what you do affects everybody in the high school and it's not just one person, it's the whole team, you know, when something goes wrong, so we like to keep it professional and respectful. It's, it's always uh, when the section get down there to the X and be there on Friday and Saturday night, you know, that's, that's what matters.
My name is Jess. Um, I own Muddy Paz Doggy Daycare here in Andover. So we do overnight boarding and um, daycare, and then we also do some light grooming, just baths, nail trims, that kind of stuff. Um, all of the dogs that board with us get to spend their entire day in daycare. They're not kenneled throughout the day. Um, we give breaks and naps and stuff as needed, but for the most part, everybody hangs out in our play area all day long. And then we also, with our daycare program, um, owners can drop their dogs off and pick them up um, later in the day, you know, if they are working or have a busy day or, you know, whatever's going on, they just need a break from their dog if they're working from home, which happens sometimes. So yeah, so we just, they, they hang out, they play. We have a large indoor area, large outdoor area. They're supervised 100% of the time while they're in play, play time. Um, and they just get a lot of exercise and socialization and yeah. I think one of my favorite part about the dogs is when we have a dog that comes in that at first is kind of shy and reserved and not sure of herself or himself and then you know after a short time or a couple days of daycare they come out of their shell and they find a friend and they just like it, it, they just become this super happy you know they're t they come in and their tails wagging versus being a little nervous so that's definitely my favorite part is just I get really excited when when they when they make that 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 leap into playing and making friends and things like that I live in Andover um, I have four daughters and they all attend Andover schools um, and so when I was looking to add a second location I really really wanted to to go to the Stick with Andover. Um, it's a growing community. Um, you know, there's tons and tons of kids and families, and usually with kids and families comes dogs. Um, you know, you, you drive anywhere or walk anywhere, there's always people out walking their dogs. And I just felt like it was just something that the Andover community needed. I have an absolutely amazing staff. I work really hard to find um, people that share the same passion with the dogs as I do and they just they truly do an amazing job and I can assure you that they take very very good care of each and every dog that is here because they do feel so so warmly about all of the dogs that are, do come in. It's just a really great community um, full of lots of great people and I love being able to you know, go to the gym or go to a, an event or a sporting event or just even Walmart, Target, you know, restaurants and I see people who I take care of their dogs. So it's just so much fun to have that link to where we live plus having a business here. Um, it just makes it, pulls it all together and I mean I'm constantly like meeting people that I know and then they, they bring their dog here and they're like, oh my gosh, you own this place? It's like, oh yeah, yeah. So it's just a fun connection between the community I live in and um, you know, families and their pets and things like that. Champlin Lifetime has been a staple in the community for over 20 years. It's so much more than just a fitness club, it's an experience. Whether you're into cardio, weightlifting, or maybe you just need a relaxing spa day in the sauna, followed by a delicious smoothie in the Life Cafe. Champlin Lifetime has you covered. You know, what I see a lot from our Champlin members is that they're really excited about, you know, the variety of things that they can do inside the club. Oh, did I mention the new pickleball courts? Because obviously pickleball is one of the fastest growing sports in the world right now. We want to bring amenities and programs to our clubs and we added three pickleball courts in there so we can have a better pickleball program for our Champlain residents around here. Obviously we have what's called open play time. This is where you sign up, you go to the court and it's just like playing pickup basketball or pick up pickleball that you do at at a, at a park in the area here. For people who've never played pickleball before, we also have introduction to pickleball classes, right? So you can learn the rule, learn the scoring, learn how to hit the ball, the different types of shots that you can hit with our pickleball pro, Brad, who's an amazing coach. So I'd recommend anybody checking that out. We have leagues available for our members. We have clinics, we have one-on-one -on -one lessons. So all of this is open to all of our members, right? And to do that, to, to know what the pickleball schedule is, what's going on, when it's going on, download the Lifetime app and log in, go to the pickleball portion of the app, and you can schedule time to be in the pickleball course. So now whether it's free or fee-based, you do need to have a reservation because to preserve the experience out there, we can only have so many people out there at a time. 
talk on the fitness floor. Obviously, we have state-of-the-art equipment. We have swimming by the pool here, lap swim. We also have basketball. We still have a basketball court that for families, right, we have our child center. We have what's called Parents Night Out. So this is a couple Saturdays a month where you can drop your kids off in the evening and you and your spouse or whoever can go go grab dinner, go to a movie, go grocery shopping, just get some time away from the kids, right? As a father of three, I can appreciate that as well. We offer birthday parties. If you want to have your birthday party here, we have pool parties or gym parties that you can get involved with. And we also have family swim. You know, it's getting to be cold out here in Minnesota. Bring your kids up here and you can do family swim as a, as a family and have a great time there. You know, if you're watching this and you want to see what it's all about, I recommend come on down to the club, right? We do tours all day long. You can sign up online, you can sign up in club. There's no pressure, right? Come check it out, see what you think, and you know, we'll answer any questions you have, and hopefully you'll, you'll love it and have a great experience here. And with the cold season approaching, now is the perfect time to sign up or return. Champlin Lifetime has some very exciting new upgrades on the way. We have played two periods, getting ready for the third for the Andover Community Center with the new LED lighting. Boy, does it look good, completing the first year of the new lighting here at the Andover Community Center. After four goals in the first period, just one in the second, Joe. Just the one. In fact, it was that power play goal they were able to answer with and uh, a much-needed goal by Brooks Cogswell. They couldn't get anything else by. Price up until then. Price had turned away everything, and this time you can see the shot got the kick rebound and blistering in that backdoor side. Cogswell getting just enough to beat Price, and that's what you need to beat him. Traffic in front, rebounds, and uh, they finally did. 4 1 now the lead for Maple Grove as we go to that final frame, and this is the final period for both of these teams left in this regular season. Cogswell scoring his 15th of the season. He ties Ben Dahl for the team lead. Nadu and Pardo getting the assist on that, making the score four to one. Shots on goal that period, 13 to seven in favor of Andover. They had a couple of nice flurries there, but only the one show, one goal to show for it. Shots on goal through two periods, 23-17. Andover one for four for the power play. Maple Grove is 0 for one. A, uh, the Huskies want to come back in this third period. A good start to the period will be tantamount here for them. It really is. They want to get Maple Grove on their heels and uh, have a force and a good uh, momentum based third period. But it's got to start early if they're going to have a chance because it's not often that you're going to put three goals past Price in a period. Caden Martin's going to be out there, but he's going to be, I think, they've jumbled the, now Caden Cole started the game. We did not call his name in the second period. I don't think he did, I, I don't think Caden Cole played in the second period. So you got Caden Martin moving up with the Ben Dahl line and Brooks Cogswell here. True. As Coach Mark Manny has made those adjustments with Keaton Cole, who is uh, nursing an injury, gave it a goal. It's a game time decision. But uh, he has not played since early in this game, and we're underway in the third period. 4-1 Maple Grove. Huskies in those white uniforms, home uniforms with the black shoulders. And Maple Grove's forecheck was especially good in the first period, and a quick low shot. Giuliani save made by Cruitt. All the goals have come to the left of us. Yes, good point. The main doors here in the lobby area of the Anoka or the uh, Andover Community Center. One of the premier facilities in Anoka County. Teams get jumbled up, pile of bodies in front of the Andover net. Good opening uh, shift here for Maple Grove. They won that face off and they went to work right away. Caden Martin trying to backhand it out of the zone, held in. Giuliani comes in, low angle shot, tic-tac-toe. Puck pinballed around from one end to the other. And the Huskies come back. Back across the line, Gorowski sends it in deep. That took a funny bounce off of that Zamboni door. Almost came out in front. Crimson goal rink wide, and Moses had man Kuznick who has a goal tonight. Four different goal scores for Maple Grove in that first period. They have not scored since the 12-43 mark, that Kuznick goal that made it 4-0. From way out onto the stick of Cruitt, up off the glass, 
And out by Sauer. Bouncing for Westman, who grabs it at the line. Comes in, squares up forehand. Garowski after the puck below the goal line, centers it up. And reaching out Belial to hold it in. Law back over to Belial. And then swung back around. Opening two minutes of the third period. Crimson with the lead and the puck. Leafblad into the near corner. First to it is Drew Law, the junior defenseman. Sullivan waits for it, but not yet out. And given up. Out in front. Pad save Cruitt. Back up near side. Another blast saved by Cruitt. Kukkonen was in tight. He already has one here tonight. Huskies having, and they've had a couple of costly turnovers, and the forecheck has caused some problem in below the goal line here tonight, Joe. It has and cash, has been money early here in this third period. Over to the left side, there's Piccinato. Comes back up high, setting up Steenerson to the right wing. In low for Kukkonen, big winger at 6'3", 215. Huskies clear this one, and they'll whistle it down, icing. 4-1 Maple Grove, but uh, they're pushing here early on in the third period to make it 5-1 to one to extend that lead. There you see Kukin and pad save, then the rebound comes back up, Piccinato with a blast, and a good reaction there by the Husky netminder. Wow, impressive. Gorowski came out for a shift, very active for the Huskies. And around, Gorowski picked up the assist in the Huskies' 1-0 win on the goal by Gore earlier this season. Huskies breakout pass, tipped out to neutral. Back onto the stick of Gavin Anderson. And then Anderson flips it back. Lutner. Lutner sidesteps Perry. Gets to the line here near side. Stell just sends it wide of the net. And below the goal line, Glendy. Glendy lost it to Lutkin. And that will sneak out of the zone. You can see Maple Grove. They're pulling their defenseman yeah. out to neutral there. They're preventing any kind of an Andover odd man rush the other way. They are. So even if that puck is anywhere near their blue line, their defensemen are not pinching to hold it in. They're backing out to the neutral zone to preserve this 4-1 lead. Centering open shot, pad save made, kicked out by Cruitt. Good look on that far wing coming into the slot. And now it's cleared out by the Huskies. Yeah, they're not only just playing preventive defense, they've had three quality looks here early in this uh, third period. Imgrund had that look. He's off on the line change now. Martin picks up the puck as he brings it in. Back door down the slot. Just a little bit behind the intended recipient, uh, Ben Dahl. Picked up the other way. Crimson right back on the attack and a shot that deflects wide of the net. Rebound centered back up and threw it out. Crimson cleared on themselves. And they'll have to go back and reset. As shots on goal. Gap has closed a bit, but 23 to 20 right now. Owen Smith. 12 and a half left third period. The longer this game stays 4-1, the better for the Crimson. Doing a nice job managing the lead. Sowers one on two here in the near side. Chipped in along the end wall. Crashes that big body in. He is tough to handle. Still just, just goes down. Shot left side. Save. Rebound. Loose puck. And trying to reach for it was Westman. Cleared by the Crimson. And that will be icing. Huskies came close. And the faceoff will be back in the Maple Grove zone. Hey, again, some traffic in front of Price. And they were almost able to take advantage of that rebound. Just trouble settling by Westman up in that high slot. Oh, good look, good chance. Sauer pulled goal, back even, Law. Yeah, they're down just by three. You feel like that one goal could really trigger something here. Maple Grove now with some speed back the other way. Leafblad tips it deep into the zone. He crashes in along the end wall. Belial. Sauer comes out. Escape the zone. Maple Grove comes right back in. Leafblad, a shot top of the near circle. Loved by Cruitt. A good flash in the leather save. Good clean save. No rebound. Saw it all the way. And uh, able to control it. A little bit of a snipe coming, top of the faceoff circle and Law. The two 7AA games tomorrow, Northern Edge will be at Marshall. And the winner of that one will play Andover at Andover here on Tuesday. And the other play-in game tomorrow is Cambridge Isanti at Anoka. A shot from the near side way out, gloved and saved and smothered by Crewe at the 5AA tournament begins next week. 
First game for Maple Grove will be Thursday. Their seeding meeting is on Sunday. Their play-in games are on Tuesday. Yeah, we had talked about it before the game, Jim. I didn't remember a case at all before where you knew who you were going to play in the region, or excuse me, in the section, prior to the regular season ending, as Andover has tonight. This one is snuck in on Cruitt. Well, the change is, is that there's an extra round now. You had all those teams that opted up out of Section 7A, try to get away from Hermantown. <laughs> so they opted up. Class A teams opted up to double A, 7 double A. So you go from eight teams down to up to 10. And that means you have to have a play in game. You have to have the pigtail game. And that starts on Saturday. So they had to have their seating all set, ready to go with 7 double A beginning to, tomorrow. Here's Cogswell shot, lots of bodies. You can see the Crimson coming back, defending well in their zone. They're a lockdown team when they get the lead. That's. That's the word on Maple Grove. They're well coached defensively. And they haven't given Andover a lot of great A opportunities. Cooking it in with a shot. Wild Karam off the end wall right onto the stick of Imgren. D to D. Lutner has to settle it down. Sweeps it down for Kukkanen. No look pass. Behind his back up the wing. Intercepted by the Huskies. Under 11 left to go. Long saucer pass. Martin finds it. But then he has two defenders on him immediately. Just didn't have any space. Space was taken away from him and nothing he could do with it. Dahl now intercepts, but he's one on three. He's got a player coming in on the left side. And that was Belial. It ends up back on that far side. Babineau in the corner. Dahl. And it sneaked past him. Ben Dahl at a four-point game against Blaine. 12 goals his last 10 games for Ben Dahl coming in. So he's been hot, but hasn't been able to cash in here in the game tonight. Had some injuries to start the season. Yeah. Got him off to a slow start, but uh, you're getting that buzz at the right time. Ben Dahl missed six games to start the season. He had a goal against Centennial in that uh, victory, a bounce back win after the two losses last week. Mark Manny was uh, ill and unable to coach those two games, the losses to Elk River and Grand Rapids. And uh, Elk River is a team that uh, can give teams some trouble. Uh, they can pull up a good game every now and then. And I believe those are probably the only two games Mark Manny has ever missed behind the bench. And you got to think, yeah. if he's missing, he has got to be. He's got to really, really be under the weather. Oh. In fact, uh, Elk River is going to finish in the top half of the Northwest Suburban Conference, currently in fifth, entering these last games of the season. They're, of course, in Section 8 AA. If any team has bounced around a lot, it's been Elk River in sections five and then seven and eight and back to seven and then eight again. You're right. It's just in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. They've been looking for a home. They've been a nomadic team. Here's a wrist shot that goes high off the glass over the crossbar by Lucas Bush. Mentioned he has a hat trick against Tino Gray. Six goals his last six games for Bush. One of those guys that played in that epic state championship game. Nearing nine minutes left. Andover running out of time here to get going on a comeback down four to one here in the third period. As the Crimson will clear it down. Icing on Maple Grove, 8.54 left. Again, Gorowski back out there. Rocco just kind of brings that activation with him. Good burst of speed and, and gets things going. And so to the look, as you get a look at the coaching staff and there's Brendan Bushy. He's a former yeah. St. Cloud State Husky defenseman. There's yeah. Coach Todd Berglund. They're both from Thief River Falls. Their other assistant coach is Tom Miller. He played at Park Center. He was a Park Center Pirate when they had a boys team. Tapped up and out. Sauer. They got three on two at the line here for Andover. Sauer forced wide. Back behind the net. Picanato on him. Tried to center. Bounce up the law. Quick shot. That was tipped off a stick and wide of the net. Gorowski, there was a hand on him. He went down. No whistle. Play continues. Up to the point. Shot Belial. Into the corner. Westman. And Maple Grove with that yeah. good size. They use that size oh. along the walls, Joe. Well, and you know what? You won't see it in the stat sheet, but that play by Picanato was amazing how he kept Sauer outside, unable to get the pass across during that three on two. Abbott at 6-5, glides through neutral, tapped in, <laughs> waiting for it, crew it behind the net, and in the corner, Belial swung up but not out, shot from the point, saved by Cruitt. 
Rebound Belial banks it off the end wall. Law will start the other way under eight now left to go. And a bouncing puck back to the Maple Grove zone. Crimson tried to force a season split. And again, these teams could face off in the state tournament as they have before, not only in the state championship game, they played in the consolation round in past years as well, as that one is scooped and Cruitt holds on. Yeah, last season, Maple Grove took a consolation loss to Hill Murray to end their season. Well, that was nice for them to probably yeah. come out and avenge the loss, two straight losses to Hill Murray. They Another, came out with some punch and fury tonight. Another shot from way out. Lutner saved by Cruitt for Huskies last year, took third place at state. Mm -hmm. Beating Green Durham Hall five to three. That was an exciting one. Pretty much all coming in that last seven, eight minutes of that third period. Hogswell sends it wide. Martin trying to track it down. Lutner, defenseman sophomore. Young talent on this Maple Grove team. Hands it off to Gavin Anderson, who's his defensive partner. Gavin's a senior, gains his own. Shot sails high. Bouncing off the seamless glass here at the Andover Community Center. Cogswell trying to pull it out of the zone. Maple Grove holds it in. Seven minutes left, 10 minutes into the third period. Shots are dead even at 25 apiece. <laughs> That's kind of where we thought the score might be here in yes. the third period at this time of the game. But instead, it's 4-1 Crimson, who played a great first period, and they've ridden that to 4-1 lead. Ouch. And we had a big hit and a collision here in the near corner. Slow to get up is Dahl. Huskies could ill afford to lose him going to the playoffs. He's slow heading over to the bench. Doubled over a bit and see he got laid out on that. Pardo to Perry comes in with speed. He's forced wide ends up along the end wall takes a bump from Owen Smith veteran defenseman Stelgis and Smith two veteran defensemen both seniors. Smith was also on that state tournament team but he was not on the roster or on the score sheet. I look back for that state championship game. Owen Smith is a senior defenseman. He played a number of games and was a regular participant of that state tournament team. I'm not sure if he was injured or was just just not on the state tournament roster. Here comes Sullivan back for Gorowski. Poke checked away. Kukin in reaching for it. Ends up back to Perry in the Maple Grove zone. Tried to steer it out in front. Ends up behind the net. Sullivan back and forth. His backhand out in front. And it was just on the uh, off wing side of Gorowski, who ends up going back after it here the near half wall. Andover's had a chance. Some really golden looks to cut that deficit to even in one goal. Cogswell had it, got it tangled up in his skates. Just not enough, though. They have been, the, the chances have been there, just not enough of them here tonight and when they have been good Zach Price has made the saves. But a lot of their shots have been out on the perimeter Cogswell comes back in bounces it to the Maple Grove line pushed ahead by Hicks and then big check here near side Martin got drilled by Bush. A lot of oohs and ahs in the crowd on that one as Huskies get it deep. Good to see Dahl back out there for Andover. Belial almost lost his helmet on a hit in the far corner. Boy, I tell you what, guys are going around there searching and hitting, and this one's going to bounce in on Cruitt, and this one's got a chance here with the way the guys are hitting out on the ice right now. Oh. Officials are going to have to watch here. They are. Make sure this one doesn't get out of hand. But we've had some big, big hits here. Here's one. Ooh. Bang. That was, that was Bush, yep. and then there was another one in the corner. Yeah, Dahl had that no look. Backhand pass out near the mouth of the goal, but uh, boy, he absorbed the check in that corner. Both teams dialing up the physical play, and especially Andover, they're trying to establish something here. A little bit might be the frustration here, being down four to one with 4:48 left. But the key here is just not take any dumb penalties, don't do anything dumb. But you can still play physical or incur an injury. That too. Nice stick handling there by Imgrun. And then it swung back around along the end wall here for the Crimson. That was Bush. Bush spins around far wing, lost it in the circle. Continues to keep that puck alive. Giuliani, low angle shot. That was blocked by Law. He's slow to get up. 420 remaining here in the game. Up to the point, Anderson. Shot by Bush. Save Cruitt. And out. Another big check. 
Westman that time. Trying on to Lutner. A little bit more leverage on that check to the glass. Crashed it right in front, stapled him into that glass right in front of the young fans here. Great seats, front row at the Andover Community Center. And across the line, Giuliani got bumped from behind on the back check. Centering attempt, Carcos. That sails through, but not out of the zone. Kept in by the Crimson. They're doing a nice job forcing the Huskies to go 200 feet here. Making them having it. The more you keep the puck deep in the other team's zone, Maple Grove keeping it deep in the Andover zone, forcing the Huskies to defend or work hard to come out of their zone. They don't have the energy back offensively to attack. No, now a like chance the other way. Gorowski ends up with the puck through center, comes across on side, lost an edge, goes down. Referee got in the way. Gorowski shaking the cobweb, centers it back, looking for Dahl on the left wing. That's off a of Maple Grove stick. Picked off Leaf Blatt and back out to the neutral zone. A lot of activity away from the puck. So, as you mentioned, Jim, they'll probably need to keep an eye on here the final three minutes. Westman up to Gorowski. They're trying to spring him out to neutral. Is intercepted. Now two on one with Dahl coming in. And Cogswell sends it up off the shoulder and fought off by the netminder Price. Maple Grove came back and got that second man covered. Another shot. That rattles around out in front. Cleared out by the Crimson. Belial has it again. And he'll bounce it into the corner, 240 left. A couple of more good chances. Bouncing pucks almost getting by Price, but still just the one goal for Andover. Gia Comini comes in, the left winger on that fourth line. Pad save, Price kicks it out. Battle for the rebound along the end wall. Babineau. Crashed in by Gore. And Coach Manny had to mix up the lines a little bit as they were initially set with the with Keaton Cole not playing. Tried it first period, not able to go the rest of the way. See Gia Comini come in for Andover. And he Gore. came in with uh, a mission: be physical. Well, that's what you want from that fourth line: be yes. physical, be that checking line, be that energy line. Bring something to the table. Perry with a steal out in front. Shot save, rebound. They score. Babino on the rebound. Love it. And it's four to two. I love the activity. Good motion. You lot to like to see that if you're Coach Manny. Just they come in and they get some good looks, good activity. They're they're buzzing around the net. Perry with the initial shot and the cleanup goes to Babino. Babineau is ninth of the season. Cogswell earlier scored his 15th. Perry gets an assist. Four to two. Now you give the Huskies a chance here to pull their netminder in a two goal game. Let's see. We'll keep an eye on Cash Cruitt. Puck is in the Maple Grove zone. Cruitt is uh, inching through the slot. He heads to the bench. Sullivan tried to walk out in front and it stripped away Lutner. Minute 20 left to go. Empty net. Huskies have made it interesting. Here come the Crimson through neutral. Six on five Huskies. And they gain the puck. Ben Dahl from behind his net. Works it up, trying to get it to Martin. He and Dahl run into each other. Along with the Crimson's Giuliani. Pardo in the center circle. Minute left. Pardo rung around. Dumped in after it. Perry. Near corner Dahl. Kept away from him by Lutner. And it's still in the corner, off the glass, high in the air. Swatted by Perry. Up to the point, shot saved, juicy rebound. Cleared not out, another rebound. And where is it? Goaltender Price looking for it. And then all of a sudden it appeared. 30 seconds left, and over the extra attacker, applying heat to try to get this to a one goal game. Dahl in the corner, want to play it out to the point, and that's going to go, ooh, they whistled icing on that. That was a Husky that cleared. Don't say anything. <laughs> and look at the, the Maple Grove bench is all over the now place. Now they'll rectify that. Yeah, I think they'll talk. Yeah, they'll bring it out to neutral. <laughs> <laughs> a reflex. Yeah, it was a reflex. It looked like a clear by Maple Grove, but... Uh, it was a beautiful icing. It was just off the wrong team stick. Yes, absolutely. But uh, the thing here is they'll have to bring it back out to neutral. And that means, you know, if they had not called that there, the Huskies would have been fine. They would have gone back and got it. They wouldn't have had to put the goaltender back in, but now they do with the draw at neutral. 
And the Huskies do win it, but they're running out of time. 15 seconds left. Pardo walks along the line. This one will be icing on Maple Grove. Just 12 seconds left. They have wow. pulled through it again. It'll be six on five, but just 12 seconds remaining. Well, hey, the Andover girls captured another yes. seat. Their seventh consecutive section double A win. Nine of the last 11 years they've gone to state. What a run. Congratulations to head coach Melissa Volk. Time out here and over at Maple Grove is playing Centennial Spring Lake Park as we speak at Roseville. And I think the report we had was one nothing Centennial last report as uh, those teams are playing for a trip to the XL Energy Center next weekend as well. That is and uh, the Andover girls getting some great balance scoring. Uh, I mean hey they have a first second and third line but I'll tell you they that what they had as a second line last night put up some good goals. They've got some blue liners with some torque as you got Mac Jones leading the team. I believe she has 17 goals and then you have little as well. She masterfully snapped off a wrister for a goal of her own but uh, just that and some good goaltending and uh, they're ready I think for section play now as they gear it up. You probably looked at it closer than I have. Who's going to be the number one seed and the double A field. Yeah. Is, uh, is Andover got a chance at it? Yeah. It's, well, I think they're probably going to end up with uh, probably Minnetonka okay. up on top. That could be one option. You know, the Huskies took a loss to Edina late, but uh, we'll have to see. It'll be a, a great uh, matchup, I think. We'll see where it ends up as the Huskies in the last rankings of the season ended up to number four, ranked four, but. Uh, They've stepped it up. I love how they overcame that loss they had earlier in the season to Hill Murray. They came back to beat them on their own ice on their pond six to one. Huskies used every second that they could during that timeout. Now we'll rejoin play here. Dahl 12 seconds left. They pack the middle comes into the corner swooping down for the Crimson. Smith grabs it and the Huskies converge. You got six bodies three in red three in white right there along the end wall and Maple Grove just trapped it up along the end wall and they run out the last few seconds and the Crimson get the win here tonight on the road against Andover. They get the four goals in the first period and they make that hold up Joe four to two. The Huskies could not overcome that first period performance by the Crimson. Four different goal scores but they came out to rapid fire full throttle from the drop of the puck in that first period. Yeah Leaf Vlad Piccinato Kukadin and Kuznick, the goal scores for Maple Grove, four different goal scores in the first period. And then the uh, Huskies get one in the second. Cogswell is team leading 15th. He ties Dahl for the team lead. And Babineau scoring at 15 16 in the latter moments of the third period. They made it 4 2, but uh, just not enough. You know, one thing you can say about the Huskies here in their home ice final game of the regular season they didn't give up I mean they got down behind they got behind four nothing obviously their dauber was down they came out and ended up outscoring them through or out shooting them 31 to 28 and uh, able to get a couple of goals against this defensive minded lockdown team of Maple Grove they made it a game gave them a little bit of a chance here down the stretch but just couldn't come all the way back yeah they did they showed some great activity good puck movement and uh, finally able to uh, Pick up a goal here late in the third period and then the power play goal in the second. But uh, hey, they didn't give up. They kept battling. And uh, hey, now they also had a chance to rest some of their players for this postseason. And hopefully some of the players can get some progress in terms of their healing before they begin section play here on the 20th. Maple Grove 18-6-0 coming in. They pick up their 19th win of the season, 19-6-0. And meanwhile, Andover wraps up the regular season 16-8-1. Uh, Again, they were 14-3-1 entering tonight since December 14th as they head into the playoffs. Again, the Crimson on Thursday. They will be either the number one or number two seed. And I think with this win, they're going to get the number one seed in Section 5AA. I think that's a consensus. They'll play at home against one of the play-in teams in 5AA. And we know for sure Andover is the number two seed. will be here at home on Tuesday. They'll host either Duluth Marshall or Northern Edge, St. Francis North Branch. Those teams play tomorrow up at Duluth. Joe, good working with you again. This wraps up our regular season hockey coverage here on QCTV. Have a great time at the
the state tournament. Yes, indeed. We still have some basketball yet to go here in the regular season. And, of course, playoff action throughout the rest of the season here as well. For everybody in the truck, all the crew here inside the arena, good job here tonight. Thank you for joining us here tonight. For Joe Rulin, I'm Jim Erickson. Again, your final here tonight. Maple Grove gets a season split, the season two game series with Andover. Four to two, your final here on QCTV Sports.